Look, I'm not much of a morning person. I just wanted to be able to point out, look at what I get to wear to work. A t-shirt and jeans. And a hat too. In all honesty, I thought my first software engineering job was gonna be button ups and, and slacks. Y'all good? Kind of had a nice little spill there. Let, let me put you up on this tripod all nice and proper light, and then we can get to business. All right, so today I'm gonna take y'all through kind of what I do as a software engineer at a startup. So first of all, this is my office. I've showed you this before, but what some of y'all kind of mentioned is like, what kind of software engineer, junior software engineer that gets their own office? Actually, there's another desk right there. I share this single office with one other software engineer. So it's not my office, it's our office. And one of the first things I do in the morning is check my email. And I also have a Google Digest to see what articles we can post onto social media. As you'll see, I'm not only a software engineer. My job's a little bit more complex than that, but I did say that was first, right? I, I lied. What's first is coffee and water. Can't forget the water. I actually run everything on my Linux server, running Ubuntu on that Linux server. That's a little better. So this morning, one of the emails that I've been expecting is this one right here. Basically, we're trying to partner up with this other like software company, I guess you can call them. They essentially have data that we need to use in one of our pieces of software. It's a, it's a big piece of software. I can't really say much about it. It's going to be essentially our product as a service, or basically what we're providing for the customer in the future, because right now we just provide services. So we want to have this particular product, and we need this guy's uh, information, well, this guy's company's information, rather, in order to access that data. And well, seems like after a long list of messages, we have a meeting on Monday. That is to discuss what needs to be done in order for us to have access to that data. That kind of that data is kind of their product, so it makes sense. They don't give it away to just anybody, so we need to make sure that everything aligns properly so we're a good candidate to become a partner with them. Which in all honesty, I'm assuming that will be just fine. We're like their ideal customer, and that API will be integrated into this, which is essentially just a front end that I'm working on right now and it is not loaded up. So allow me to do that real quick so I can show you what I'm actually working on, like the, the actual interface of it. All right, so I have to throw up in the terminal. I'm gonna throw the terminal right over here. I gotta change directory into where it is, if I remember this correctly, and all of the directory names. Uh, okay. And I'm gonna command ng serve. Basically what it's doing now is building all the modules for this project that I'm working on right now and it's throwing it up on localhost port for 4200. And basically what ng serve allows me to do is whenever I edit the code or HTML, I'm able to save it right over here and it'll proactively refresh the page over here so I don't have to rebuild it every single time. So taking a closer look, this is one of the dashboards that I've designed. I haven't really made it specific to what we're doing, but I'm trying to get the overall layout right and discuss it with my office mate in order to really decide what we want in this. So I'm putting together all the widgets. Right now we have a few of the main points right up here that the person using will need. We're just making the dashboard as informative as possible with a few line graphs, with a few, uh, you know, a task panel down here and this map because we are shipping things. That's kind of what this would serve as is where are your shipments. But those are just semantics. Basically, I've created three different dashboards in order to just kind of be able to discuss and then work upon, see what I need to take out, see what I need to add in. Maybe, you know, one thing from one dashboard is good, but one thing from another dashboard is also good and we want those two to be together. And then I'm, after that, I'm going to be going in. And as you can see right here, it says view details on each one of these little widgets. And then I've been creating the pages for the details of these individual widgets, but I'm not gonna show you that because specifics. I can't get into specifics of this program because it's not mine to share. It is the company's. So besides client work, that ranges anywhere from the random WordPress site all the way up to enterprise software for one of our clients is actually a Fortune 500 company. This is one of the projects that I'm working on. Another one 
is working out the math. That's why I'm in an Excel sheet. Uh, behind this, I don't know how to say this without saying too much, basically something to help uh, companies price out their services and understand everything that needs to go into giving a quote. So there are other softwares like this, but nothing for the industry that we're working in. They're actually kind of behind on technology. And as far as software engineering is concerned, that's what I'm working on right now in my job. I mean, ask me two months from now or ask me two months ago, the answer would have been pretty different because, you know, projects are always changing. We're always working on something new, something better. Maybe we're in a different phase of the development cycle than we are right now. So that's what the development or the software engineering is taking over right now. But that's just a, that's a large portion of my job, but not the whole entire job. A lot that goes into working at a startup is being able to be flexible and actually working on things that a startup needs not just software. So there's a lot of marketing that goes into this. Social media, the website, networking. I actually go to a couple events a month in order to get my name out there, in order to get the company's name out there. And these events are industry events. So people who would be our potential clients would be there. And we just strike a conversation, not necessarily trying to sell, but in order to get our name out there, you need to be out there. So think of it less as a trade show and more as a get together where you're making connections, you're making friends, and you will be on their radar if they ever need a service similar to what you provide. So that's just tip number one in starting a business is, is network, network, network. And sorry if my voice sounds a little weird. I'm kind of, you know, I'm in this building, in this office building where I don't want to be too quiet for y'all, but I don't want to be too loud for everybody else out in other offices. I mean, if we take a look right outside, let's, let's just peek real quick. A lot of those offices, especially the ones with the light ones, as you can see, are occupied. So I don't want to be too loud because it's weird recording around other people. Plus, they're trying to work, so I've got to be considerate. And although I like to think I know everything, I, I don't. I mean, over the past however many years, I've been studying up on marketing and business development, but it wasn't until I got into this job where I really had to put my knowledge to the test. And I realized I wasn't up to par as, as I'd like to be. So what I did was use Skillshare. I'm sure you've already heard of Skillshare. Skillshare is an online video course platform where they teach everything from software development. I know a lot of y'all are computer science students, software developers, and that is a good place to learn a specific niche like iOS development or Android development. But also they have a lot of business development, a lot of marketing, Anything that goes into a startup culture or freelancing, if that's something you're into, that's what they provide on their platform. So I went over there and I did a lot of their marketing and business development type courses in order to really up my skills within this whole entire industry, really. If there's one thing you need to know about working at a startup is that it's highly beneficial to have skills that help that startup grow. I mean, software development, sure, that's gonna be your base if you're working as a software engineer or software developer, but if you know more about marketing than the next guy that has the same exact software development skills as you, you're more likely to get the job because you're going to help that startup in more ways than just one. So that's kind of what I'm doing here is a lot of marketing and business development. And Skillshare really allowed me to take my skills to the next level, and I want them to be able to help you do the same. And that is why I'm so excited that they're allowing me to give back to you guys, to the community, because I have a link for you guys. It's gonna be down in the description, at the top of the description, where the first 500 people to sign up via that link will be able to get two months of Skillshare for free. So don't miss out, take a look at that, sign up. It, it's free, free, you know how much I like free. And you also know I like my daily walks. I feel like this is a good opportunity to kind of talk about the culture of the startup. I mean, you saw a little bit of where I worked, but that's not really what makes up the culture. It's more of the atmosphere that the people at the company create. And the people at this company that I work for are amazing. I mean, the, I have the ability to have lenient hours. If I need to work from home, I can work from home. If I come in a little bit later, then I just stay a little bit later. If I wanna come in a little bit earlier, then I'm able to get off a little bit earlier. And it's a heavy emphasis on don't be here for 16 or even 10 hours a day. Be here, 
get the work done that you need to get done, which, you know, will generally take around seven, eight, sometimes nine hours, and then go home, enjoy your the other half of your life. And that's something that I really appreciate because it allows me time to spend time with my family, spend time with you guys making these videos, as well as creating my own side projects and not getting burnt out at work because, I mean, if you're at work over 10 or 16 hours a day working for somebody else or even work for yourself, you're going to get burnt out if you're doing the same thing all the time. Like, even if it is split up between like marketing, business development, uh, software development, whatever, if you're not taking any time to yourself, you're going to be a lot less productive than the person who is. You'll be able to get more done in eight hours than that person can in 16 hours because they're going to be fiddling, they're going to be taking breaks, they're going to be doing this, doing that. So that's one thing that I think is very valuable, especially in this type of culture, at least for the company I work for, is that take time to yourself and just when you're at work, get the work done that you know, you need to get done. So I talked about a few of the projects that I worked on. I talked about what my actual job as a software engineer entails. And I also talked a bit about the culture. Is there anything I'm missing? Actually, I did. Remember that software engineer that I said shares this office with me? Well, he is actually the owner of this whole entire company. He's not here now. This is one of the rare times I get the office to myself for the whole entire day. But he has taught me more than I ever could have wished. Like he is the smartest software engineer that I've ever met. I'm not just saying that because I mean, I don't even think he watches my videos or even knows I have a YouTube channel, but he is also very smart when it comes to business and everything that he has. He's essentially my mentor when it comes to software engineering as well as the business aspect of things because a lot of things that he has taught me as well as a lot of things that I've been forced to learn using Skillshare, I've been able to apply that to my own businesses, to my own practice in order to increase my YouTube following, in order to take what I've learned and then I'll put that into my business plan when it comes to my application, or when it comes to these courses that I'm working on that I've mentioned in previous videos. So there's so much that I've learned at this business simply because it is a startup. I would not have access to the people, you know, the top people or the business savvy people within some Fortune 500 company like where I almost worked or at a government contracting job, which was also another option. It's just when it comes to where you need to work, there's a lot of things that you should think about if you wanna work at a startup like company or if you wanna work at a Fortune 500 company. There are benefits, you know, pros and cons for each. It just depends on what type of person you are as to where one outweighs the other. And this one for me heavily outweighs any other option that I potentially had. So that's where I'm gonna leave it. If there's anything that I missed, I will make future videos like this, whether they're in this office or not. I guess that kind of depends on his schedule because I'm not going to record a video with somebody else in the office. But if there's anything that you have that's a short question, leave it in the comment below. If there's something else that you think I need to elaborate a little bit more on, then I will address that in a future video similar to this one. So be sure to subscribe if you aren't already so you don't miss those videos. And until next time, guys, have a good one. Peace. Hold on. I need to address something before somebody else addresses it. You may be saying, well, you do web development. That means you're not a software engineer, you're a software developer. Look, I, my title, my official title is software engineer. I don't only do web development like you saw, I also do Java development on enterprise software, trying to push the limits of old technologies and new technologies and essentially engineer it to work exactly the way I need it to. So I mean, does it really matter <laughs> what we call you know, software developer, software engineer? The only reason I titled it what it was is simply because that is my job title, software engineer. And to be honest with you, more often than not, the person who points out, oh, you're a software developer, not an engineer, is generally the person that's neither. So don't be that guy. Spread positivity. Don't try to always be right. Understand that some things are opinionated, sometimes you're wrong, sometimes you're right when it is actual facts. And it's just, that's a whole other video in and of its own. I'm, get, I'm, I'm ranting. Take, t t take it easy, guys.